Hey everyone, it is Cynix, and I am back for part two of our Trollhound Design Lab. Uh, so to do this one a little differently, um, and I'm kind of going to be doing different things all throughout, but for starters I'm just going to take this uh, this blobby little silhouette that I have, and I'm just going to try to make some loose line art. Not very exact line art, but just like a sketch, uh, just to actually define what it is I think we might be looking at. So just kind of trying to make more organic -y shapes um, and kind of defining the legs and everything. Uh, but that was already a bit defined. So the main reason I'm doing this line art stuff is to define what the head will look like. Uh, because obviously there's not really any indication whatsoever what's going on um, in the head area. And I guess I should mention, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but in the corner... Uh, this is silhouette or design number six that I'm actually going to be developing, and I have seven there too. Uh, I think they both had about the same amount of interest from you people, uh, but six actually had more interest at the time when I made this. Uh, but I thought I'd try to at least incorporate some of this stuff from seven if I could. Uh, but anyway, here you can see I'm actually drawing out the head. And I wanted to kind of have that big bulbous -y snout, like I mentioned. Um, and it kind of looks very much like a troll. Probably too much like a traditional human troll. That might be a problem. But I tried to give it like this little under... It's kind of grimy dog nose that I gave it. It's kind of on the underside and it's kind of deformed a bit and stuff like that. Um, the other thing this looks like is kind of like a naked mole rat or something. I don't know. Uh, but there's the eye. I put the eye in and kind of on the lower side part. Uh, so it's not quite a dog, but it's, you know, it's basically the troll equivalent of what we would consider a dog. Uh, so it doesn't have to be too exact with, like, the whole hound thing. Because uh, obviously that was the theme. Uh, but for all this stuff, I kind of decided to just kind of put debris and stuff. Like, uh, it kind of gets covered in branches and things or maybe it like gets branches in itself to kind of build itself up and make it more appealing to the female troll hounds or whatever you know just kind of give it some kind of interesting characteristics where if you were going to make a bunch of these you could probably separate them by the weird stuff they have attached to them um, and stuff like that so this one has some kind of branches and things coming out of it and here I actually switched to Photoshop uh, there was a small little transition you might have noticed uh, and that's just so I could play with things. I wanted to play with the head a bit, kind of mess with the size. It was kind of maybe a little too big. Uh, I wanted to change the angle a little bit. Obviously, I'll flip it horizontally just to make sure the proportions, not the proportions, but just to make sure the uh, perspective is correct. And here we go. I am going to completely take the cheater's way out of doing this uh, coloring because... I don't have much experience with creature coloring, and I need to work on it more, but uh, just for now, I thought it'd be fun to kind of experiment with just kind of these textures and things. So these are all pictures I took. I think I took these in Balboa Bay, random things. You can see the first one was actually a, a weird tree I saw that kind of looked like it had hair on it. It was kind of weird and disgusting, but it had a great texture. Sadly, I feel like it looks too much like rock. Um, it came out looking too much like rock when I applied it to this thing. It's, it kind of just looks like it's made of these jagged rocks. And this other thing I messed with was a headlight from a Vespa scooter, which obviously wouldn't be very organic, but I noticed, like, you know, if you just take a section of it, it kind of has those uh, striations, and it's very uh, reflective, obviously. So I want this creature to be nice and slimy. So I have a lot of stuff from the beach that I took as well. Or I should say, my friend took. I went on a little adventure with my friend, and we took pictures of the beach for this very purpose of using them for art stuff. Uh, so you can see these wet rocks, however, are kind of interesting. They have a lot of sliminess to them. Obviously, um, to show that something's more wet or slimy, it basically just means it has more speculars. And speculars are just the white, hot highlights that you'll get on something, and mainly like in a small dot. So, say if your skin was dry, it would just kind of have a dull texture. No real strong white highlights. Uh, if you get it wet, then you'll have little spots of white light where the light reflects. Because, obviously, water is 
lot more reflective than your dull skin. So when you get something wet, you get all those little white speculars. So it's a good way to make something look slimy and grimy. Uh, so here we can go. I'm just still playing with my textures a little bit. I wanted them to be kind of more greenish and kind of earthy and slimy. And it got a bit too, uh, like I said, the, the, the bark texture is a bit like rocky looking, but you know, it's okay. I decided to leave the face like kind of on the front white and I'm going to come back to that and actually try a different texture for that one because I think I had a couple more pictures I wanted to test out. Um, but the main reason I'm using all these pictures is just to kind of establish a general uh, color scheme. Obviously I'm not just trying to build the complete thing just out of these picture textures. I just want to kind of have them there to make it easier to have these uh, built-in details and also to have some uh, colors to just kind of pick from and work with and set my color scheme real easy. So here's a very kind of wet smooth rock that was at the beach and this is seems like it's perfect for just a slimy texture and you can see I flip it to the side because I want to have the lighting and things at least uh, basically match up obviously not perfectly but the perspective of everything over the pictures you want to rotate them and do whatever you have to do to make them at least look like they somewhat fit into things. So I added some of that texture and that really makes it look a lot more grimy and trollish I think anyway and it works good for the face too and that nose it's very uh, obviously that's where I'm not gonna have a lot of fur and stuff so uh, I feel like that was actually a pretty good texture um, yeah I'm kind of borrowing a page from uh, Feng Zhu's book I've been watching his videos a lot and I recommend you guys do the same it's FZD school uh, on YouTube and he's he's pretty good at just kind of summarizing. He's very good at environments and everything, but he's also very good at kind of helping you out with workflow and getting you more prepared for a work environment. Um, I'm not as good at, you know, work environments and stuff like that, but he's, you know, very good, very professional, uh, knows how to kind of keep stuff on schedule and knows how to operate on a work thing. So he talks a lot about you know using pictures especially your own pictures don't use other people's pictures use your own pictures to kind of quickly if they can help you do a design whether through textures or photo colors uh, that's great you know any any kind of shortcut you can use to get your design out there obviously this design is not going to look like a smooth rock or a piece of bark it's going to look different and you can see I'm back in Painter now. I switched over af after I finished with all the photo stuff. I switched back to Painter. And now I'm just kind of going in and trying to make it more, uh, get rid of those textures, but not completely. Just kind of make it, bring out the troll shape once again. And I actually didn't save the line art, so that was kind of a mistake. I should have left it on top. Uh, but just, you know, so I could clearly see what I was doing. So I kind of, you know, mess with things a little bit. And maybe it helped because I think I changed the face a little bit. I like the how the bottom uh, jaw is working right here. We can just see the side of the mouth and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm basically just focusing on values now and trying to get, you know, shadows, the shadow areas to be more shadowy and the p things that aren't in the foreground or the focus to kind of blend into the background by washing them out with white since the background is white and I just want them to kind of fade away not be a focal point so I'm doing that a lot with kind of the debris that's around his mane and the back legs and stuff like that um, obviously I'm also adding a lot of hair and I don't need a texture for this it works good when I do it by hand um, just with a thick and thin pen uh, it's pretty good for hairy stuff like I showed in the last video uh, but there you can see I added my black uh, colorized layer just to check my values and the values aren't that great. I didn't do a proper um, kind of setup for the values. I don't think I defined uh, the different turning of shapes as well as I could have or anything like that. Uh, but you know it was just kind of spur of the moment and once again, I don't have much experience with creature stuff or stuff like that. So, you know, it's a learning experience, and I took a very easy route with all the photo texture stuff. Uh, but hopefully it'll give you some ideas, and I, I encourage you to try stuff like that, and especially to go out and take pictures. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's something good to do. You can get do it with a friend. You can go on a date and do it if you want to date someone. Uh, 
girls like photography stuff. So, you know, you just go out and say, like, let's take pictures for art stuff and I'll use them later and stuff like that. And, you know, it's all very fun. There's a lot of fun to be had just doing that and hanging out with people and, you know, seeing interesting sites, getting to know your community more. So, anyway, checking the values once again and going over these. I think I added some color. I was trying to blur the background part, uh, the tail and everything, checking the values. Uh, I, I like parts of the face. Like, I feel like it's nice and slimy. and It, it, it feels like it works. I can see the design completely. Uh, it kind of has that one floppy ear that comes out to the side near the back. Um, and obviously you can't see the other ear because it's hidden behind the face and the big old nose. Uh, I wish I could have defined like the the bottom part of the nose a bit more uh, with my colors and everything, but you know something to work on in the future. I don't think I made this monster jewelly enough either. I probably could have added more jewel and slime. It's all that good griminess that uh, you want to see in a creature. Um, yeah, so. As far as creatures go, I feel like there's a lot of people that are really good at specializing in them. And I feel like it's actually more common than industrial design. At least just from what I've noticed around like conceptart.org. It seems to be a more commonly loved uh, thing to do, uh, creature design. And I never really got into it, but I mean, I can understand how it's fun, but I, I just love the industrial stuff a lot more. I don't know why. It's just fun to me. It's more like engineering and stuff like that so here I am adding my shadow just a simple shadow nothing too exciting and I'm pretty much done at this point uh, just adding little details here and there but yeah that's that is it and I will be adding this piece to DeviantArt just so you can look at the actual art out of video form because obviously video form takes away a little bit of the resolution and everything uh, but here we go. Oh, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to name it. I named it Orangulwolf because that sounds very, sounds very Finlandish and very trollish. It sounds like the name of a troll hound, Orangulwolf. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll be back shortly with hopefully some guest stuff and some other fun stuff. All right, see it.